All right, folks, um, end of day of June 1st. I just got a few questions that uh, prompted me to make this video. Um, I take a lot of time and effort in order to lay out a roadmap for me every morning, and I share it with everybody. And it's basically four charts in the morning, maybe five, with two or three sentences. So I'm going to revisit this morning's and uh, to update, to actually answer the questions I'm getting now. I, th I figure I can't put it in writing. I'm just going to have to say it. So hopefully it's also a little lesson reminder about how to use the stuff that comes into your inbox. You don't have to do anything. It just comes into your inbox every morning via email before the market opens at dark o'clock my time in California. So I'll share the S&P, the QQQ, and the IWM ETF charts short term and with lines that will matter. And all I can do is every morning update those lines and lay out the trade for the day. Um, if I get a question like at the end of the day today, so you're saying that you think that the S&P is going to rally more than the IWM, which one do you pick, this one or that one? I'm not picking at the question. It's a valid question, but the answer is in your hand already and will be in your inbox by tomorrow morning. So uh, maybe they're trading after, not, after, after hours, that's fine. But this is the process I go through and you can also follow along. So this is the S&P, right? So I'm going to put my lines. And I'm not changing anything. I haven't changed anything since I sent them out this morning. So the message this morning was, uh, let's see here, we're six one. This, you know, we popped a huge open, and I had this box already drawn. And look at where we failed. I wasn't like Nostradamus, knowing that this is where they're going to fail. I knew that that would matter. That's the top that mattered in early May, and that was the message from last week. The markets have to deal with the failures of early May. That doesn't mean they're going to fail again. It means that they're likely to fail there the next time they get there. So this was a resistance cluster. I couldn't have worded it any better. And it worked out as planned. So now we faded back into a level of support. It's not a hard line in the sand. Although I do have a hard line in the sand, a mini one, 419. So you can see they're setting a hard line in the sand. If they lose that one, they're going to 418 or 41750, which mattered last week, I remember. I remember those digits right there. So, which I already marked as pivot. So even if you don't get an email from me yesterday, all you have to do is revert to this chart and you'll know where it's, where it's at. However, I will update this with the overnight action. So this blue line after hours will be up here or down here. We don't know. We'll see. So now the bulls put a big line in the sand up here, an exhaustive candle. This is not a good candle. It's literally... Uh, a tall order. <laughs> Look at it. It sticks out like a sore thumb among whatever. So it, the pop open did not hold and it was rejected harshly. However, the small caps IWM did the exact opposite. So let's go there. The IWM ran through its resistance level one resistant, and at the resistance level two. So tomorrow I would extend this one to say, and I'll push this one and I'll say, I'll, I'll do it right now. It is a I won't do it right now because I'll forget that I did it and I'll go in the morning. So I'll flip it to be supportive. This should be also supportive and supportive. So any prior resistance will matter on the way down. So if they dip, I wouldn't get out here. That's the place to buy along to attempt this. And if they take out this one, they're going to here. So I wouldn't short it. But I look left and look at this fail. So I'll put a line there and I'll say this is going to matter uh, later in life. So how how much later? I don't know. Maybe now, maybe six months from now, if that's the actual failure. Uh, yep, that's the right point. Uh, prior fail. I'll say prior fail. Big time. Uh, so this is these are messages to me. I don't care about um, spelling correctly. Uh, meanwhile, huge range. So push pull. What about the QQQ? So this is the QQQ. This dot matters. I don't. There we go. Look, see. Uh, it has mattered, has mattered. Look, stuck. We're stuck in it. So this morning, this was, are we going there? Or are we falling back to the prior pivot? They're still stuck in the middle in a resistance zone. And it held. Look, I would extend it that way. It would still matter. May 7th fail. Still, early May failure. They still have to deal with it, DES. So nothing. I can't tell you which way it's going to open, what's going to happen overnight. I just follow it one line at a time inside the macro so we've nailed the macro so far somewhat easy to nail 
we've nailed the short-term action like what we saw in the S&P. And then there's something else that we track and I share in the morning, which is the S&P futures. Slightly different than the SPX. Um, it's usually more active trader. Talk about it. Trigger to 4244. What was the high today? I'm curious. 4230. So they went short. So if I look at 4230, I'd like you to guess where that value came from. Early May, 7th through the 10th. So there's no rocket science here. One line at a time. So 4244, I would extend it this way. This is the trigger that would have gotten us there. But they failed. They left it on the table. They failed through the support zone. Short-term support zone, not a disaster. It just shows body language. Now we're back consolidating sideways. Not a bad thing to do for the bulls. Is it a disaster? No. So now we have triggers on the short term for the active traders right here, right here. So this would bring a bear. In fact, the bulls were saved by the bell tonight. There were two bearish patterns that should have unfolded down to 41.65, 41.72. So I would not be surprised to see those value tomorrow. Am I calling for them? No. But I will watch to see how the, the futures unfold overnight and how we open and how 4195 holds, how 4189 holds. Of course, 4180. But I think the pattern is unfolding. I think it was a five minute ca candles. Um, so you can call this neckline lost. This one was almost lost. Any which way you slice it, it's in the hands of the bears. They're selling the pops. After so much enthusiasm in the morning, they're selling the pops. So. I look below. I don't look above, but it's a mucky picture. You have the Dow that was up a little bit, the small caps that were up a lot of bit, uh, the the S&P was flattish, and the uh, QQQ was down a little bit last time I checked. So by a little bit, I mean 0.3%. And overall, the VIX, the fear, was up like 7% last time I checked. So complete mess indecision everywhere nobody's convic don't, nobody should had should have good conviction of anything short term you may have a long term perspective on a company do homework that's all fine and dandy overnight this is the stuff you have to look at if you want to expect the price action and not to say oh my gosh what happened so now we know the lines that will matter so we're ready to answer the question which one is likely to go this way or that way i have no idea to, to tell you the honest truth is that the S&P should be in the hands of the bears and they got saved by the bell. Assuming that the bell didn't ring, the overnight action should have been bearish. So I would vote that the S&P may be at its heels tomorrow morning versus the up move today. We'll see. That's it. Nick signing out. Um, these messages are in the boxes every day for members. So if you're a member, all you have to do is go to your email. If not the email, all other resources some have access to the website some have access to the chat room it's all there if not join us <laughs> somewhere in the description there might be a link anyway nick signing out <laughs>